Okay, for people joining this live stream, this is one of a series of meetings that we're doing to figure out what functions in Wolfram language that have been tagged as experimental, we can potentially make non-experimental for our upcoming uh, release. So this will be a whole collection of different kinds of things. We're gonna start with text search here. So you guys really seriously think we're ready to de-experimentalize this. Did we resolve the question of what the search results are supposed to look like? There's an ongoing discussion about uh, consistency in search results. Yeah. Uh, so far, that is uh, like uh, at a very early uh, stage of, of, of planning. And wow. so we don't know how that will impact text search design. So that is a big thing to to take it into account if we are going to the experimentalize text yeah. search. Well, which is a good argument not to. So let's try to, we need to move that forward before we can de-experimentalize this because it's probably going to change the output. Okay? I, I don't know. So I think that's the end of that story. It has to stay experimental for now. Um, do you disagree? No. Okay. Then we, we need to well, we need to move forward on that issue of figuring out. Uh, do we have a, a, another meeting scheduled about that particular issue? Do you know? I don't, think I don't so. know. Okay. So we need to get <laughs> such a meeting and try and move it forward, or you guys need to move it forward without me, if that would be even better. Yeah, we'll, we'll discuss it with uh, with the group. Okay, okay, fine. So within, let's say within a week or two, let's try to meet about this because it'd be great to resolve this before version twelve, and so we can de-experimentalize this. Make sense? Okay. Yes, I I, I think the, the current idea is to use data set. So this is where the, the, this is. Okay, right fine. Now. Let's let's work through the different cases because we know there are. To look at how how dataset could provide yeah, a solution. I, I know, I know. Yeah. So there are multiple cases for web image search, Wikipedia search, text yeah. search, and so on. So we met once about this. Let's please get another meeting, and we need to figure out who is going to be leading this from a project management point of view. Is it um, <clears throat> is it Matt? Is it somebody else? What's the story? Okay. But the important thing is that we need to actually get make make progress on this particular item. Fair? Yeah. Okay, great. All right. I think that's it for you guys, Chiara and um, Nicholas. If you unless there's anything, is there anything else on this list for you guys? No. We don't have the web crawl we stuff on the... there yet. No. Okay, terrific. All right. Then I think okay, you guys are free to go. Okay. See Bye -bye. you later. Thanks. Bye. Okay, audio. So we have a lot of the audio functions already non-experimental, right? Yes. And the reason you... Why are we... What is the audio stream anyway? This is the handle to an audio stream, uh, to an audio object or an input device that you can play, pause, stop, record from, and so forth. And how does this relate to any of the other such objects for network packet capturing and God knows what else that we might have that are similar kinds of, you know, uh, indirect handles to players? Um, we don't, not completely figured out, right? No, no. And one thing, as the note says, we added in 11.3 is the capture streams. So audio stream of input device reads from a device for an unknown amount of time and goes on. Okay. And that, that I think is not completely figured out. We haven't quite uh, worked out the real time audio processing yet, which is probably going to depend. Uh, this design is going to be <coughs> as well. So the whole well, family we suggest we keep experimental. But what about audio capture? Isn't audio capture something fairly real by now? It is. The only reason that I suggest we keep it still experimental is for, so that we figure out the storage location. Why does it matter to users? 
Oh, I see. This one captures into a file. As opposed to what, by default? On doc, well, um, default, it just goes somewhere that is not as documented. A Wolfram Audio directory under dollar user document directory. And I think overall in the system, we are not consistent in where we are storing these um, Wolfram language generated assets. I think it should go in the local object store. We've talked about that. Um, that's that's not what, uh, from an LCC point of view, is agreed upon either. Okay, I think that's where it should go. I mean, can we inventory, you know, where generated files go? I know that they can go to the temp directory. They can go to um, the local object store. Where else can they go? Documents or this dollar user documents directory export, I think, writes in that as well. Why would export write something there? Or no, export writes it in directory. Yeah, it writes it in the current directory. Current directory, yes. Okay, I mean, we kind of just need to. Um, this I have an inventory project. I, I don't think my inventory is complete, and I sent it to Itai a long time ago. But as I said, I don't think we all agree on where these things should be placed at. Fine. And no one let's, has let's, taken an attempt to. Okay, let's just that. inventory where things get where things put sure. stuff. Like we can look at you know my dollar user documents directory and see what's there and see whether the you know. Um, Yeah, I mean, I don't know which I don't even know which version I'm running here, but let, let's do this one here. Um, let's say uh, dollar user documents directory. Okay, and now let's do file names of that. Oh. Star, star, comma. Yeah. You know, we should consider changing that. We should consider adding something. Okay, so we've got all kinds of junk here. What funky stuff. Okay. And notice okay. you have quite a few Wolfram directories there. The last three lines, you have Wolfram Audio, Wolfram Audio Capture, which was an older thing. Yeah. If you do, yeah, there's that. a bunch of crazy stuff there. Yep. I mean, I don't care that I have junk in here. Okay, let's let's set this as an LCC task to go figure out where things put stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I think we're going to find out we can quite easily standardize because we've got management tools for dealing with the local object store, and that's a good start. Okay, let's right. talk about what's that make sense? Right. Yes, and speech synthesize is basically the same story as well. that we were just worried about where to put it. Exactly. I don't think that's such a terrible thing. I mean, we could de-experimentalize and change the automatic setting later if that's all we're concerned about, about where to put it. I, I would let, Let's try to resolve the question of where to put it, which I think we can do, and let's plan to de-experimentalize this. Okay? Unless okay. there's something else about speech synthesize you don't like. No, that's it. Okay, so if I say spectrogram of this, cool, super cool. Okay, I really would like to see those and audio capture de-experimentalized. Okay. Makes sense, all right. Is that all for you? Yes. Okay, thank you, Shadi. All right, thank you. See you later. Okay, is Fahim here for the yes, cookie store? I I'm right here. Great. How's the cookie store? The cookie store has policy issues and privacy issues, and that's why it is currently experimental. And what is the cookie store recording? Uh, it's supposed to, if you give it a file name, it's supposed to save your cookies 
between sessions. And in the previous discussion, this was frowned upon. And that's why we have always kept it non and experimental. So wait a minute. So what does this do? Gives a location at which to store information on persistent cookies to be used by URL read. So this is something which is like the key ring issue. Is that true? No, not quite, but similar. Okay. So I mean, it's storing just like you could store passwords. To yeah, that, that's you right. Want to exactly. store cookies to reuse. Yeah. So the privacy issue is that it's stored in plain text, or yes, precisely. So it really should be using the the key ring mechanism or something, because if it could store it in the key ring, we're all good, aren't we? Okay. Yeah. Probably. I, I'll have to see the employee how key ring works. But... Well, key ring is currently a bit of a mess because we, okay. we we backed into something that is really a complicated issue of encryption protocols and so on. Okay, and then the other yeah. issue, yeah. yes, the other issue is that because it's a text file, multiple kernel sessions, I'm not quite sure how that will work out. The modern way of storing cookies is in database. This is a text file. And th that, that's why it really is a fairly good sized project, not a great, very complicated one, but it to do what? I mean, what's wrong with? I mean, basically, it's a key value store, right? It's it, this cookie, this value, isn't it? Right, but it's stored in a text file. So, so accessing what? the file from multiple kernels might be an issue. Accessing as in read write accessing? Uh, yes. Ugh. So, the modern browsers use databases to store cookies and it's... Well, that's an issue for the key ring, actually, as well. I mean, okay. that's a, that question about multiple access, which I don't think we discussed in the key ring. Okay. Um, main point. Okay, who's who's project managing here? Um, I'm noting things down. Yeah. So we should get project managers who deal with each of these projects in here. Okay. Who who dealt with Fahim? Who dealt with the cookie business? Uh, it was between you and I. And there okay. wasn't a lot of project managers back then. Okay. Um. Well, okay. So so, I guess Brad Ashby is the person dealing with the key ring. Can we make him aware that this is a similar issue and also highlight this business about multiple access for the key ring? I'll let him know. Okay. All right, so I agree cookie store has to sadly remain an experimental cookie store. You can get all kinds of different kinds of experimental cookies there. Let me not try and make up more puns even though I probably could generate lots. <laughs> okay, all right, let's talk about the mail functionality stuff. Okay, so this will also remain the experimental simply because of all the search Integration. All the uncertainty about what we return from search. Precisely, and that's why it's experimental still. And I mean, if I did a mail server connect right now. Yeah, it should work. I mean, that there's no issue with that. And, and, and what did you do in terms of... Um... Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. Okay. So, Wow. Okay, so then I should be able to actually do, I'm, you know, we haven't been able to use this yet. Right, um, and the issue is the speed, and uh, th there's a lot of good amount of work that is needed to actually have it sort of, for, for people to be using, to use it actually. And, well, so, so for example, here, let's see. I mean, this is quite beautiful. Uh, it's, it's, it's not that good, actually. And uh, this well, and this isn't that good because this is a this is a um, uh, you know that's an attachment, isn't it? Yeah, and I. Why did that do that? Okay. And why did that, is that an unread message? Yes. Okay. Well, it's cool, and I kind of agree with you, it can't be de-experimentalized, sadly. Mm -hmm. um, incoming mail settings, is that part of the, that's part of the world of, of um, 
uh, the system, right? Yes, as part of the system settings or. Oh gosh, yeah, that can't be made to, that can't work. Um, that's really kind of wild because this needs the key ring again. This incoming mail settings needs the key ring. Yes. Okay. What about dollar mobile phone? And I, I don't know what that is. It isn't yours? No. Okay, whose is it? Raj, whose is it? Uh, let me take a quick look. I don't think that needs to stay experimental. I think that's a perfectly valid thing. Well, I, I put it under mail functionality because it's, it's knitted in the mail. Yeah, it's knitted on that under that guide page. So But it's nothing to do with mail. Okay, I'll I'll look into it. Okay. I think uh, if nobody else knows about it, the people who worked on the Twilio service connection, which means Alan and so on, or or people or Christian, those guys would know about that. Okay. And I, I don't see any reason why send message and mobile phone should stay experimental, and I would recommend that they not. Okay. Okay. Okay, was that everything for Fahim? That I should think, be it. Yep, thank you. Okay, great. Nice to see you. Okay, um, hey, uh, Fahim. Yes. Unless you already hung up. Just out of curiosity, what, what are you working on right now? I'm working on financial data. Okay. Um, yeah. Cool. Okay. okay. Thank you. Fine. All right. Yeah, we'll okay. have a meeting about it soon enough. Yeah, thank you. Good. Okay. All right. Um, You might have to let Devendra in. I think he might be waiting for you to let him in. Oh. Yeah, he's in. Okay, great. Hi, Devendra. Hi. Okay, Roger will review the syntax, which gives the serious specification before moving. So this should presumably be... Um, <coughs> I mean, will this come to me in a Roger style uh, design review? Exactly, yes. Okay. Along with the other uh, asymptotic solvers for version 12, we've got two more, uh, three more coming up actually. What are they? Uh, so asymptotic sum, asymptotic R solve value, and asymptotic solve from Adam. What does asymptotic solve do? Uh, it it finds an asymptotic solution of an algebraic equation. I mean, like in a Pusso series near a singularity or parametric uh, solutions. and Cool. It is a very nice function and it's well documented. So we just want to hold off everything until we meet you for that meeting. Okay. All right. What, what about, I'm just, I'm curiosity. What does asymptotic sum do? It finds an asymptotic for some, if you, if you have a ref page, you can look at it, but basically it does things like Euler Maclaurin and other things to get, uh, you know, so. Just. I mean, this is still a, a little bit of development, but it, it's, it's coming on along well. You need a, a week more, maybe, to get it all in place. Okay. Let me just, um, just for curiosity, let's look at asymptotic solve. Yes, that's a beautiful function. And uh, the applications are really wonderful over here. Okay, let's take a look. All right, just, just to improve our mood, let's take a look at this. All right, let me see here. You want to, okay, so asymptotic solve. Oh, that is pretty cool. Yes. And so that's, I mean, that's basically solving around y equals zero. Right. So it's like a serious solution, but it deals with singularities and so on. Is that the idea? Yes. So it, at a, at a, an ordinary point, it could be a power series or tailor, but it could be, it could do Pusso and that kind of stuff. And yes, it can cope with pretty general algebraic curves and Things like, you know, transcendental roots can now get a finite version. So. Yeah, it's cool. Why are these things called asymptotic, whatever, rather than series, whatever? Uh, and that's uh, Roger made decision, but, but we are realizing that the, the word asymptotic actually seems to have, um, uh, allow us to have a, this more general kind of solution, you know, like WKB or whatever. And those could be called series, but I think we just want to make sure that we kind of don't have to change the name or, you know, restrict ourselves because we didn't 
allows a more general asymptotic non-convergent kind of behavior fair enough so okay well anyway that that's a, okay that's for that that discussion this looks yes. cool, very cool okay yes. Good. Anything else for Devendra here? So, so those will undoubtedly de-experimentalize for twelve, right? Uh, de yeah, Okay. So one more thing that I think Roger is going to decide on that, but uh, he wants to also have a few more functions going in. So we might just hold off everything a little bit, not because. That's fine. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not a problem. This, so okay. these 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 are not going to end up being experimental ever, probably. Uh, Eventually, by they'll be all be in the system. They are, they're already pretty good. They're being used nicely, but we just want to have enough time. To okay, sounds good. Okay. Thank you. okay, thanks a lot, Steve, Devendra. Stephen, can you jump to file operations next? Because we don't have the developers for the next uh, next few here. Okay, we don't have the folks for chat. What is control object anyway? Uh, There's just one function form control. Um, okay. And the chat thing is still, oh gosh, this is such a mess. Okay, let's go to file operations. Okay, why do you want to keep file system map experimental? So the main reason is that we haven't sorted out a good way of how to handle functions that evaluate on directories and on files. So file system map, we currently operate on files. We scan through whatever the directory level that you specify is, but the problem is in returning the nested associations, we don't have a good way to indicate this is the result of the evaluation on this directory, and this is the evaluation on the file and within each directory. So it, it's not really an evaluation problem, it's a output problem if we want to have file system map be able to evaluate on directories as well as the files within them. I understand. Didn't we have an option for file system map to get it to also look at directories? That was one of the things that we were looking at doing. Right now, we don't have that because we don't know how to make the output work reasonably. You know, the, the idea being that each of the, the directory is the key for another association, and each file is a key with the value of the evaluation on it. And if we want, basically, <clears throat> if you have a parent directory that you evaluate file date on, and then there are a bunch of files inside that directory that you also evaluated file date on. How do we indicate that this is the file date for the entire directory without sort of overriding the individual file results? And it turns out most of our file operations actually work on both date or on files and directories. Okay, okay, okay. So, so the issue here is that, um, uh, Let's see. So, in this case, this is a directory, right? Yes, that is a directory. And then. Okay, so the issue is that the self, we don't know how to indicate that this. Um, but the file date for that directory is something we have. No, I understand. We don't know because because right now, the only place the directory appears is as that association key. Key, correct, yeah. I mean, so, so you know, like like one way to do it, which would be very Unix-y, is to say, you know, dot, arrow, whatever. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'd thought about using dot or self or identity, but none of them really seem to be, you know, dot is fine in sort of a unix -y yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, but a better thing, I mean, those are string names, and a better thing would be to use a symbol. Right, because we don't want to confuse, you know, if you happen to have a file in that directory called automatic, then... Well, then not, but, but this would yeah, be a symbol we, anyway. Right, if we use a symbol, then it's a little clearer. I mean, inherited might be the, but even that's pretty weird. Yeah. And, you know, directory is a symbol, but it... No, it feels, no, absolutely yeah. not. Mm -hmm. So the, the How do we problem... feel about the general structure of what we're getting here? I mean, that is, you know... I, mean, I think we've generally been happy with it, the sort of default idea of you get this <laughs> set of nested associations that mirrors what exists on the file system, but you can also squish things down if you want and flatten it. You know, functionally, we haven't really had a problem with file system map or file system scan doesn't have this issue because it doesn't produce output. But I thought it would be weird if we de-experimentalize 
scan, but leave. Yeah, I understand. Scan. Okay, but hold on. Let, let, let's let's just address the issue here. Okay. Sure so first of all, do we have an option anywhere else for allowing directories? In other words, for for considering directories. In, in, in I believe there's an include directories. Maybe not. I thought there was an include directory. Um, create intermediate directories. Mm -hmm. And things like file names already, they don't really make a strong distinction between directories and files unless you're using a pattern for it. Yeah, you know, it occurred to me that something that I want to do all the time is make a list of files in a directory. Why don't we have a function that's just called file list? So we had looked at I mean, the, the basic problem ends up being that for you know a basic operation, we say, give me the list of files that are in this directory. It works. As soon as we start trying to add extra parameters to say, give me files that you know have this name, it basically turns into a clone of file names. You know, the, the, the slightly funky thing about file names is that it defaults to looking at your current oh, working directory, directory right. which is why a lot of the single argument forms end up being weird. Otherwise, you could say file names of give a directory name. And then well, it's not what stupid to, to look at the, I mean, file names, to, to look at the current directory is not, you know, star dot, you know, C or something. It's mm -hmm. not stupid to, to right. It's uh, it's not stupid to to do that. It's just it's what makes it slightly more cumbersome in terms of saying I want all the files in this directory. Is you need to say, you know, asterisk comma the directory you actually want. I know. By the way, does all work as well? I believe it does. I believe all is a alias for the wildcard string. Whoops. Yep, it does. Yeah, and I believe that's documented, and we were trying to promote the usage of that over the wildcard string. It looks like that hasn't been moved up. I'll I'll double check on that after this meeting. Yeah, I think it would be useful even to give it in this top level area here. Mm -hmm. That's stupid, though. Just say or file names of all. Yeah, the next bullet uh, points uh, uh, is uh, the same thing, but it needs to be condensed. Yes, and I think it should also be up in the top here. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I would argue that we should put, just put it file names of all comma dir here. Mm -hmm. There's a list of all, all files. Okay. Um, fine, okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm off the plan of, of having a, that specific file. So, I mean, the issue then... What was the idea with the web crawler of what it's returning? It's trying to return a structure that's the same kind of general shape as file system map, right? That was a, that's a Nicholas thing. Maybe we, can somebody see if they can get Nicholas? Nick, Nicholas Lickmeyer? I'll try to fetch him. Sander on our live stream is suggesting the name parent. I'm not sure that's quite the right thing because I mean, basically, what it is is it's the directory name arrow, and then the directory name as as an association key arrow, and then file one arrow whatever, and then the question is, what's the boy? What a weird thing. I mean, what what's the self thing here? Yeah, I mean, we'd also briefly talked about having, you know, if you we wanted to evaluate it, we could have the the directory be the key, but then it doesn't necessarily point directly to an association. It could be a list and then an association, but then yeah, the structure gets really funky. Um, you know, the other person it'd be wonderful if we could see if we can find them is is Jose, who could talk about how the uh, tree representation relates to this. Um, okay, if Nicholas we can't find these folks. Okay, we can't find the folks now, then we should postpone this for a bit. But I, I would love to solve this problem. This seems like a, a, you know, just a little design nugget 
that we have mm -hmm. to um uh um once we sort it out, these are basically done. Yeah, it's just, it's something I haven't had a lot of time to devote much thought to. Um, so if we if we can get a few people together and sort of hammer out what a reasonable way to do that is, we can basically clear all these off. I just thought it would be weird to de-experimentalize some of them without solving this problem. Right, no, I agree. Mm -hmm. Carl Lang on the live stream is, is saying that file system map makes me think it's a map type function, which it is. Mm -hmm. There's nothing non-mappy about it that I know of. I mean, uh, yeah, the, the main difference is that instead of giving an explicit list, you give a directory and it generates the list of files from it. Right. So it's implicitly mapping over the this collection of um uh oh we have to let these people in okay hi nicholas hi jose hello um, hi we are talking about file system map and we're trying to understand some things about its structure yep. uh, in particular the issue is file system map doesn't have a good way if we had an include directories option and we have some function that is being applied to directories themselves as well as to their file contents we don't have a good way to return results that relate to the directory because the directory is right now just being used as an association key. So my question first to Nicholas is, in what we're doing with, with what are we calling it? Is it web, what is it called, web crawl? What, what is the function that we're, we're setting up for web crawling? Uh, web crawl map, I, I think it is right now. But uh, okay. in the web, is, this is easy because in the web, uh, a directory is, is uh, it's an entity on its own right. I'm sorry, you're saying it is or is not an entity? It is. In, in, in the web, uh, a directory, it's a, it's a page with everything that it, it's not like a file system. It's, it's a bit different. Walk me through that. So in the case of the web, what, what does this return? I mean... You're saying it isn't sub, but it does have subdirectories, doesn't it? The the thing we're returning. Yes, yes. But the, in, the, in the web, when a URL ends with slash, it's considered a directory. But it's a, it's a, an HTTP object, just as everything else. I see. Okay, but but so but when you return stuff, so if you look at file system map, one feature of file system map is it is returning. Um, uh, this is a really weird installation directory. If if you have a chance, Nick. yeah. The main issue is we wanted an example that will work when anyone evaluates it. And no, I know that, but just put an installation directory for Wolfram Desktop instead. Okay. So, yeah. Um. Okay, but but in any case, the point here is that we've got this thing. Um. Okay, do, do you have a hierarchical form like this one, Nicholas, for the web crawl stuff? No. Not at all. So it's just a list of URLs, is that correct? Uh, the web crawl advances and crawls everything it can. It, it is programmed to do, and it and it and you your function will be called will be applied to each URL, whether it's a file whether it ends on slash or it doesn't. End no, but I understand that. But slash. the whole point is that file system map can represent the hierarchy of the file system by a nested set of associations. You're saying that that's not true with mm -hmm. web crawl map. Is that correct? That web crawl map will return only a flat list of URL arrow value. Yes, because the web not always is strictly a, 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 a hierarchy. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay, so, that, so then it's doing messier. So in this case, it's like infinity for the last argument for the R argument here, which gives no. Wait, wait, wait which, which, what is the subdirectories down to level n are represented by an association? What is what is the one here that does? Oh, I see. With with zero, what is the case where? That last argument is zero, then it will be it will flatten it out, correct? Yeah. Okay, so file system map it. of 
file date or file size. Um, is it file size or file byte count? File size, um, installation directory. Okay, so if I do the default of that, it will be one level there. Yep. Okay. If I do two levels there, then it will show me presumably, oh boy, it's huge. Um, it will show me some directories. So at the one level case, it doesn't even show me the directories that are here. Right, right. because the it's the directory itself, the installation directory is basically the implied key to that association. No, so I understand that, but, but there are no sub keys here. I could have a key for the add-ons directory. Mm -hmm. Right, where, where I don't go inside it, I only see the directory and it's the value of the function applied to the whole directory. Mm -hmm. so yeah, if we were to include directories in the evaluation. So we could say include directories and at the leaf level, it's pretty clear what to do. Right. Okay, so the issue is, so I think include directories, so there's an option include directories that makes sense to have. Mm -hmm that just determines whether at the leaves you include directories. Make sense? Yeah. Whether, okay, then the next question is at the non-leaves, how do we represent the value of the function applied to the directories? Mm -hmm. And first point, what Nicholas is claiming is that you never do this hierarchical thing for the web. You could. I, I, I don't feel it as a natural thing to do. But you, you certainly could. Okay, so if I do that, wait a minute, what does zero do? What, is, what do I need to do? Do I do infinity there to get? Uh, so I think you want to do one to flatten it down, right? That's So R is the level associated with it. So it's basically... Why didn't zero case. do that as well? Uh, I guess I it zero should have could. Done that. Yeah, I guess I wasn't as sure in terms of what we wanted to do in handling of a zero level specification since it usually refers back to the head. I see. I, I think zero should do that, but but okay. But so in the web case, this is the kind of output you're generating, Nicholas, is that correct? Yes, uh, flatten, I think. Okay. Okay, so look, include directories I'm not sure that's the right name for it, for the leaf thing is clearly a worthwhile option, yeah. right? Next mm -hmm. question is, in the intermediate, now notice that we already had an option called include intermediate directories, which is some other, didn't we? What was that thing about intermediate directories? Create intermediate directories, I think oh, that's for. Okay, that's, that's for some copy file mechanism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, all right, so now the next question is, so now there's a question about trees, it's a question for Jose. Um, do we have, is there a natural way to take this nested set of associations and make it into a tree? There is, isn't there? It's an expression, it's the expression tree function, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, I think so. It, it's a function that knows what to do explicitly with associations, yes. Okay, is it in the is it in the prototype build yet? Uh, I think it is. Yes. Maybe it's in a trees. Um, do we need say needs trees? Um, no, I don't think so. Mm -mm. Um, unless I think this is the prototype build I'm running here. Oh no, 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 no! It's not the prototype build. Okay, let me let me get the prototype build for a second. Mm -hmm. Um, because what I want to see is how would the tree handle, how would the tree, the tree element thing will correctly handle having things, I mean, because, because arguably file system map could actually return a tree as well. That could be another thing that it can return. Actually, arguably, we might want a function called file system tree. Or is that crazy? Because we have a thing that does tree map, right? That, that maps a function over the nodes of a tree. Silence. Don't we have I, that? I don't, I don't remember right now. Okay. I think we do have that. So 
Let's take this. Okay, now let's say expression tree. File system graph might be a better name than file system tree. Really? I think. That little bizarre creature purports to be the tree. E yes, it, it, this is a very flat lot of. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. But now at the nodes, so do you understand what I'm saying? We've mm -hmm. got this notion of tree element, mm -hmm. which operates, you know, where, where we can actually attach data to the nodes, right? Yes. Um, but here, we don't have a method. In the nested associations, so if I had a tree that had things attached to its nodes and I did expression tree expression, what would it do? How would it return the nested association from that? Did that make any sense? Well, the payload is interpreted as the head. So it's going to create something as the head of the... So, so the, the payload is the head of the expression right. and then the leaves or the subtrees will be the arguments of that head. I see, I see, I see. So that's something completely crazy from this, from this point of view. Well, maybe. Uh, let me see. So there's no, what about, is there an association, a tree association thing that will go mm. to a nested mm. association? I don't think so. No. No, there is not such a thing. It's just expression tree or tree expression that know what to do with associations explicitly. Because they will use the keys as some labels for the arrows connecting, etc. Yes. But in in the case of the left hand side, because the directories are frequently um, treated as files, perhaps there is a notion of uh, the action of the directory as being interpreted as a file for some functions. Yeah, I understand. The problem is that that if we're going to give a property like this is a file size here, we're mm -hmm. going to give a property of the directory itself. If it's a leaf, we know how to do it. But if it's a an intermediate node, it's not clear how to indicate a property of that intermediate node as opposed to one of the leaf nodes. Yes, but what I mean is that there, there is a case in which you don't want to enter a directory, but you still want to know the full size of that directory. And then there is a case of you enter the directory and then you sure, are giving them. Yeah. But so we've got a mechanism, I think, for not going very deep. So the directories are leaves, mm -hmm. but then we uh, you know, give the properties of the directory. And I think there will be some kind of include directories thing. The case, the case that we don't know, we, so we know how to solve that one. The case we mm -hmm. don't know how to solve is when there's an intermediate node that has a property of the intermediate node, right? In addition to the properties of the leaves. Because right now, the only thing that has a property here is the leaf. I see. And, and what about introducing some sort of um, token as a key, like like would be like self or something like that that gives yeah, the value we for about that? We thought about that. It's a possibility. Um, yeah, I think that's the best thing. We just need to name it. Boy, we've been avoiding a self for so long. I mean. All inherited. I mean, all is probably the least crazy that I can immediately think of. Because it does refer to the whole directory. But now, does that really work? Because if we have two levels of this, so let's say we have A arrow, another level of directory, B arrow, and then the files, F1, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Yeah. So now... I don't quite get it. So a B arrow, I see that's a, that's. There will be an all together with F one and another one together with B. Yeah, that's right. I think that's the least crazy thing we've come up with here. Nick, your comments? Yeah, I mean, I think it makes sense. The <clears throat> I'm just trying to think 
for pretty much any case, all makes sense. You know, file size certainly makes sense to say all because it's effectively the sum of all of the components. File well, the inode, you know, what the inode is or something, it um, uh, it's a little funky to call it all, but it's not completely mm -hmm. crazy. Right. Yeah, I'm just taking a quick look at what functions we have. Because there are some functions we have that will operate on directories and not files and vice versa, but the majority of functions that work on file system expressions work on either. Well, parent directory is a little bit funky. I guess that works on a file as well. Yeah. All right, call, so it, call it directory. We can't do that. Dollar directory, if it was a new symbol. Makes sense. No, 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 because it will evaluate. Mm -hmm. that, um, we don't have that. I know we don't have it, but it should. We sh if we had it, it would evaluate. I see. Yeah, yeah. If it's a dollar symbol, it should have a value. That makes sense. Yeah. Is there a okay. reason these couldn't be represented by an object? What kind? A directory object, file object, that contains the metadata instead of putting that as the, the value? Um, I don't think that's a great idea. I mean, you, in other words, you're suggesting that the, that the head be decorated. I mean, that the key be decorated here. I don't think that's a great idea for these purposes. Look, I think let's plan on this. And the issue is, do we have include directories as a single option? Um, or do we or, want to differentiate? Do we want to differentiate the directories as leaves? I mean, in a sense. I guess, it, yeah, it's the question of do you evaluate on all directories or only at the deepest level? Yeah. And right, you could have true, false, automatic, and automatic is only the leaves. That's not terrible. Mm -hmm. And in the case of true, <clears throat> it's true, it would do the all decoration. We do the all decoration. And does that mean that at the deepest level, we want it to just give the value as if it's a leaf, or do we want it to yeah. actually create a direct? Okay. Yep. No, we want to give it the value as, so we just want to name it as directory, blah, 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 arrow, and then the, the, the function applied to the directory. Right. Okay. Yeah. We don't want to, it makes sense. We have a level spec. We don't want to change the dimensionality just because we can handle the intermediate nodes in a different fashion. It's still right. Okay. Yep. So I think true, arguably, I mean, there is actually another case, which is the case where you want the intermediate ones, but you don't want the deepest level, or is that a silly case? Uh, I don't know of a usage scenario where it would be the case, but I, I mean, that doesn't. Right. You can also imagine, you know, a list NM include directories for yeah. levels N through M. I think that would make sense. All right. What, Nick, why don't you see if you can get, you know, think this through in more detail and, um, I think uh, we're going to prototype version of it and we can, I think that'll be good. Yep. And then let's look at that. Um, and then hopefully we can de-experimentalize this guy for uh, for 12.0. Okay. Yep. Um, um, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't affect file name forms or file system scans. So if we're good there, then those other two can come along for the ride. Sounds good. Okay. Um, oh, can all right. you jump to resource system next, Stephen? Okay. I think we're kind of running out of time, but but. Um, Okay, who here? Who needs to stick around here for resource system? Bob uh, is here. Okay. And uh, Brad, Brad Ashby. Great. Okay, so I think I can leave. Okay, thanks a lot, Jose. Thank okay. you, Nick. Both Nick. Um, Should I go? Thank you. What's that? Should I leave or go? Uh, go? Yeah, you don't. You don't need to stick around. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Bye. Um. Okay, resource system. So we've got a lot of stuff already de-experimentalized. Right. Yeah, 
by the way, Sandra on our live stream was suggesting a wrapper of some kind. For Unfortunately, we are not in a good position to have a, di a, a directory wrapper because we already have this unfortunate function called directory. That returns a directory. Unless we did something really kind of... I don't think that will really help us actually, because um, it won't really help us. That would to decorate it with a directory wrapper will only help in the case where we're distinguishing, which we don't particularly think we need to do, between a directory within a within a directory, so to speak, and an individual file within a directory. I mean, that's a distinction we might be interested in making, um, but I think that's yet another level of distinction, which we can, after all, make in the in the payload in the right hand side of the the result from applying the function. Okay, let, let's talk briefly about the resource system. Then we've got to wrap this up. Um, let's see. Yeah, resource search definitely changing. Yep. I'm unconvinced about resource remove being there at all. I agree, especially now that we have delete object. I think we should just I think we should deprecate it. That's fine. Yeah. Delete object is the same thing, so. Right. Just make sure delete object is properly properly documented. Um okay, resource submit and the publisher ID business. Um do we really want to call it publisher ID as opposed to resource publisher ID? Are there other things we're going to publish? I mean, I guess we have cloud publish, which is confusing. I think so. I, I could see this changing in the uh, near future. I just don't think we've properly debugged that system. I mean, have we? Have people been using resource submit yet? Only internally, really. I think maybe... Uh, maybe half a dozen external people. We've only issued a couple of external publisher IDs. Right. Well, it's a challenge for folks on the live stream to start submitting resources and to actually get publisher IDs and to start using resource submit. Yeah, I, these these functions seem a little bit embryonic right now. Because yeah. also, presumably, resource submit can take a whole notebook, right? Can take the submission notebook for, for the data repository or whatever else. Um, I should. I know resource object can take the notebooks. So you might need a second wrapper, but it'd be trivial to set that up. You know, okay. do that automatically. Well, right, fine. Okay, so I think this, this is not ready for prime time. Resource update. Yeah, so there. I think there are options, possibly even additional arguments that will be added at some point for a version for you know manual version what control. Is that that's an incorrectly typeset thing should be fixed. Yeah, that's just a template input error. It looks like probably my fault. Um, but yeah, I, I think you know we, we have sort of automatic version control that does the right thing for ninety five percent of what people want. But I think we'll want to extend this to allow more manual control. Well, okay. There's also the question of the packlet update system. I mean, since we're we're now making packlets ready for prime time, um, right. So that will also have an update mechanism. And so we might want to merge the update mechanisms for these things. We'll definitely need to make sure they play well together. I yeah. recently had a conversation with John that makes me think some of this stuff might change significantly um, in the okay. near to medium future, at John. least significantly enough to keep it from being right, de-experimentalized. So let's not de-experimentalize these. Okay. All right, so I think that's everything on the resource system. So nothing nothing can get de-experimentalized at this time. Okay. Um, just looking ahead here, I'm going to guess uh, theorem proving is going to go fairly easily, I think. Um, scheduled tasks, I have no idea why there's even anything experimental there at all. Oh, all that stuff. Wow. I'm pretty sure that's ready to de-experimentalize. Raj, do you know anything about that? Um, well, Constantine wants it to be experimental, probably for one more version. Um, I don't I, know why. I have no idea why. He, he, I think he's probably confused. Um, so let's have a discussion with him. If we need it, we should make sure Tom is on call for that discussion. 
I'm 90% certain he's confused. I mean, his main concern was that he doesn't have enough use cases to be uh, to feel comfortable enough to de-experimentalize. I mean, it's not... Okay. Uh, I, I don't think it's not his expertise to figure that out. And then there is apparently a known issue about insufficient support of time specifications, which still needs to be addressed. Okay, fine, but that's an implementation issue. Right. Okay. Right. I'll, I'll get everything else in, in the next meeting. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. This is almost certainly ready to experimentalize. I don't know what on earth, why on earth somebody thinks it isn't. Okay. It needs to be. That needs to be non-experimental for 12. Okay. Uh, okay. We, can, we can probably address that in the next meeting. Sounds good. Okay. Well, thank you all. Thanks to folks on the live stream. And uh, on to the next thing. All right. See you all later. Okay, bye-bye.